can be prevented. And so dyskinesia, if you're not aware, is just an abnormality or impairment of a voluntary movement. So oftentimes you'll have, um, you can have a dyskinesia in your head, your neck, you have kind of these involuntary movements of your head or your neck, your hand, maybe your foot. Um, and throughout the Congress today, they were talking a lot about how, you know, they very commonly increase over time because of uh, medication use over time. And I'm going to talk about that here in a second. So I want to blow through this real fast. And I want to really emphasize first and foremost how important it is to have a movement disorder specialist on your team. Um, if you guys don't have one, it's a specialized neurologist who knows a lot about movement disorders specifically and Parkinson's falls in that category of a movement disorder. So you really want someone who is specially trained in your diagnosis so that they can look at the subtleties of your symptoms and really distinguish um, where they're coming from and how to best help you manage them. So I want to emphasize that first and foremost because I'm going to talk about some things that do have to do with medication dosages and I am not a physician. I am a physiotherapist or physical therapist in the States and I can't tell you what to do with your medications or what not to do but a lot of these um, indicators can help you recognize if you're being properly medicated um, and if your medications are optimized and oftentimes they aren't and it can vary a lot um, over time your dosages and it can also your medication dosage over time will change and it's important to be in constant contact with your physician about new symptoms that come on so I want to talk about first I want to talk about the four fluctuations of dyskinesia in Parkinson's so if you're having dyskinesia and you're kind of just labeling it as plain dyskinesia there may and you're having difficulty managing it it may be beneficial to see if any of these descriptions fit you so that you can take that um, conversation back to your movement disorder specialist and talk to them about maybe how to optimize your medication dosages um, so the first kind of dyskinesia is it sounds like the most common kind which is peak dose dyskinesia which if you think about your Parkinson's medications throughout the day you take your Parkinson's medications and um, you go back into this on period and then you start to drop again into your off period and then you have an on period and an off period and what you're trying to do with your Parkinson's medications and you're trying to stay in this kind of optimal zone in the middle so when you are optimally medicated your, your symptoms are improved but you're not having dyskinesia um, and you know once you get the peak dose dyskinesia is when your medication starts to rise and you get outside of your optimal zone and you're potentially over medicated so you're having too much L-dopa, too much levodopa in your system and you start to have dyskinesias. Um, it may only happen for a certain amount of time before you go back into your optimal zone and then hit an off period. So there are different types of peak dose dyskinesia and it can obviously be in your limbs or in your trunk, you know, your head, your hand, your foot. But two that they talked about that I hadn't recognized that um, I wanted to make you all aware of is that you can have ocular dyskinesia, which is ocular is your eyes. And if you have dyskinesia in your eyes, you'll have a constant kind of upward gaze or like um, they called it a to and fro pattern. Um, but essentially you have these involuntary movements that take your eyes upward in a dys dyskinesia pattern. And there's also respiratory dyskinesia. So respiratory has to do with your lungs. Um, if you find yourself after your medications, maybe you're um, after you're on state, you kind of go into this peak period and you're noticing that you have really fast breathing or um, with an irregular rate and kind of irregular depth to it. It's not just a normal fast breath, but you're breathing really quickly. It's really inconsistent. That can be a respiratory dyskinesia. So um, I've had quite a few clients say that they have tremors on the inside. They don't really know how to identify it. Um, this may be one of those things where it's going on inside, but you don't really see it on the outside of you. So that could be a dyskinesia in play. And I am going to talk very specifically about peak dose dyskinesia. So if that's you, I want you to stay put and pay attention um, here in just a minute because there are some uh, management and prevention techniques that we can go through about um, the peak dose dyskinesia. But the second kind of fluctuation of dyskinesia is called diphasic dyskinesia and they def so diphasic is two phases um, 
at the beginning and the end of your dose when your levodopa levels are changing. So it's like mid-dose. Um, you kind of, if you have this, this up and down, your diaphasic um, dyskinesia happens at the beginning or the end of your dose when your L-dopa L levels are changing. So it's at that transition where it's like, it's just about to shift into on period and you might have dyskinesias there. You're maybe just about to switch into an off period and you have dyskinesias there. Um, so that can be called diaphasic dyskinesia. And um, that can be, can, um, you can identify maybe diaphasic dyskinesia. One way is to, there's something called silly walks. So you, if you are walking with a big, I've never seen this personally, but they showed us a bunch of videos. If you're walking and you're stepping with kicks or stomps on one leg, that's called a silly walk, and that might be an identification of diaphasic dyskinesia. Again, if you're having these symptoms, it's important to bring this back to your movement disorder specialist so that they can help you optimize and um, kind of redistribute your levodopa levels. The third type of fluctuation you can have with your dyskinesia is called a low-dose dyskinesia. And this is most notably seen in the mornings where you have, you're kind of in this off period from your medication and you have a lot of dystonia. So they, they label that as low-dose dyskinesia. And again, that's just going back to your MDS, your movement disorder specialist, and saying, I'm having this symptom. How can we optimize my distribution of L-DOPA maybe overnight or in the morning so that this um, off-period dystonia doesn't happen? And then the fourth type of fluctuation with your dyskinesia is called stimulation-induced dyskinesia. And this is typically seen early stages after you have deep brain stimulation, um, specifically DBS for the substantia nigra or the STN. Uh, deep brain stimulation. So it's predominantly in the lower body. So if you weren't having dyskinesia before you had deep brain stimulation, you had DBS, and then you're noticing that you have um, kind of some abnormal movements in your legs, this can be what's called stimulation-induced dyskinesia. So those are the four types of fluctuations of dyskinesia that um, may be going on with you. And again, the answer there is to take the knowledge that you gain from this, write it down, take it to your movement disorder specialist, and tell them what's going on so that they can help you optimally dose your medications. Okay? All right.